Hi, welcome to my channel. I am going to be sharing my story about being diagnosed with lung cancer um, at a younger age than what most people think of when they think of a lung cancer patient and hopefully can use this space um, to share and to educate. So let's go back to the beginning. It was 2021, we were still kind of in that, like the thick of the pandemic in a way, you know, we were like coming out of it. Um, and I had been experiencing throughout the summer, starting in like early spring, a cough that was like kind of wheezy, it was dry, and it would it would catch my breath mid-sentence. Like I would be like, so how was it? <laughs> how was the rest of your afternoon? And that's how mild it was. It would just catch me sometimes. I wasn't sick and it was so mild that I like never bothered to get it checked out. I would just say, you know, I feel like I've been kind of like wheezing and this cough, it just feels like wheezy. I assumed it was allergies. I had asthma like as a child and I don't know, humidity, allergens, like I was chalking it up to just something that happens. Well, fast forward to September of 2021, I had a doctor's appointment on my calendar already from a year prior, just to check in with my PCP for a yearly appointment. So I'm sitting there in my doctor's office, you know, we're doing like kind of the normal physical stuff. She's checking me out, talking about maybe getting some updated blood work, checking my vitamin D levels. And I mentioned I've been having this cough and I don't know, I, I feel like it's been around for months now, it's not going away. And we talked about maybe it's allergies, maybe I can try an allergy medication for a few weeks or it could be acid reflux. We could try some acid reflux medication for a few weeks, see if that takes it away. But I remember hearing during the pandemic that COVID could cause lung scarring even in asymptomatic cases. So I was like, who knows? Maybe I'd had COVID and never realized it and now I have some sort of like lung symptoms left over from a COVID infection that I didn't know about. So I asked for a chest x-ray and my doctor, I will love her forever. She's amazing. She was like, you want a chest x-ray? Let's get you a chest x-ray. Walked me right down the hall. I got the x-ray right then and there. And here's kind of the weird part, and I just like to throw this in because I think it's interesting. First you get the front panel and you stand with your shoulders almost touching the wall and they're taking the x-ray from the back. And they, they do that and she goes, okay, you can turn to the side. I'm just gonna you know reset the machine and then we'll get the second image where you're standing sideways. And I'm looking at the computer monitor as I'm waiting for her to reset the the machine and I see my first image on the computer screen and there's like this oval that's like that big right on the right side of my chest which you know it over my lung area and I remember looking at it and being like what on earth like what would that be there's nothing in in the chest or the lung area that looks like that in the human body that's weird so she took the second x-ray and she said, okay, you know, the doctor will call you when your results are back. And I came home that night and I was at dinner and I said to my husband, there was like a mass on the right side of my lung. And he was like, what do you mean a mass? And I was like, I don't know. It was strange anyway. And we went back to our dinner because what on earth would that be? There had to be a reasonable explanation. The next day, I was at a pumpkin patch, like a working pumpkin farm uh, with my daughter. And we were doing, you know, the little petting zoo portion. She was playing in the corn pit, climbing on hay bales. And I got a call from my doctor. Um, actually, you know what? No, we were driving to the pumpkin patch and I got a call from my doctor and I answered the phone while we were driving. And I still needed my GPS to like get to this pumpkin patch. So as soon as I picked up the phone and started talking to my doctor, I pulled into like a Dunkin' Donuts parking lot to have the conversation. And she was like, there was something abnormal on your x-ray. And I said, it's that mass on the right side, right? And she was like, yes. I'm like, I saw it on the x-ray. And she said, we need to get you in for a CT scan today. And I'm like, you know, 
Friday might be better, da da da. And she was like, we need to get this done today. And I was like, this means, <laughs> this means something that um, I haven't experienced before. I haven't had a doctor um, treat me with urgency before because I've never necessitated that. So that scared me. We uh, got my CT scheduled for later that uh, evening, like around five o'clock or so. And I finished my drive to the pumpkin patch and we were walking around. I was in a little bit of a daze. I called my mom. I was crying on the phone saying, I have to get a CT scan later. Like something might be wrong. It was like starting to sink in. I was starting to panic a little bit. And my daughter went to school. She was in like afternoon school. So I dropped her off to kindergarten and arranged for um, a neighbor to pick her up from school. And I went and got my CT scan and it was a hold and read, meaning I was supposed to wait in the waiting room until the doctor read it. So I was sitting in the waiting room waiting for them to call me back to be informed and my phone rang and it was my doctor, my PCP. Um, and she said, they just sent me your CT. You can leave the waiting room now. I walked to my car and she said, this is what the report says. And she said, the mass was speculated and speculated means like spiky. There's spicules coming off of it, like pointy things or like, if you imagine an egg, an egg has really smooth borders and it's like very obvious, very differentiated. Well, a tumor, has like like fingers coming out of itself. It's looking for somewhere to go, it's growing, it's actively invading nearby structures and nearby tissues. So when you have something in your body that is speculated, it's not a good sign. So the radiologist said this is highly suspicious for neoplasm and um, he recommended follow up with you know a surgeon for a PET scan. And my doctor said, I'm referring you to a thoracic surgeon. I'm going to try to order the PET scan. She wasn't able to order it. It was actually the surgeon who ended up ordering the PET scan. But now this is where I'm going to try to remember like the chronological order and I might get a little mixed up. But the surgeon calls and is like, all right, we're going to get you scheduled for a biopsy, a bronchoscopy biopsy and um, a PET scan. So the PET scan took a little while, like you're in the tube laying there. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I don't think the PET scan took very long, but the prep did. Like you have to drink the solution that they give you. There's an IV involved for like the radioactive isotope to like flag. Uh, a PET scan is looking at um, highly metabolic tissue in your body. So a, a tumor, a cancerous tumor is highly metabolic. It, like it, it takes up sugar and stuff and is very active metabolically compared to other normal structures in your body. So when you get a PET scan, um, those highly metabolic particles or cells take up the radioactive sugars that have been put into you and it shows up on the PET scan as like a bright spot. So anything highly metabolic will take that up and show as a bright spot. So they can see if the bright spot is just where the tumor is or if it's elsewhere too, if it's in lymph nodes, if it's metastasized somewhere else. So I had the PET scan. Um, it showed that the tumor was highly metabolic and active and um, it didn't show much else. Um, they thought like, well, is that lymph node? Like they, they were pretty sure it was just the tumor at that time. So I had the bronchoscopy biopsy. They put me, you know, to sleep for a little bit, went down my throat um, to my airway, took a couple pieces of the tumor, took samples of whatever lymph nodes they can reach while they were in, the, in there and sent it off to the lab. The lab looks at it all under a microscope, gets back to them and says, it's adenocarcinoma. And that's what my doctor says when he calls me on the phone a few days later. He says, this is an adenocarcinoma, which is cancer. Um, and he's thinking it's a lung primary because it had a couple other markers that let him know that this probably started in the lung. It didn't start elsewhere in my body and metastasize to my lung. This looks like a lung primary, meaning it began in the lung. 
and all the lymph nodes he sampled were negative, but one didn't survive processing, which my other doctor was like, that means the lab dropped it on the floor, ha ha. So, um, it was time to get scheduled for surgery because apparently it hadn't metastasized anywhere else and that meant I was at a stage of my cancer that was early enough, meaning not stage four, um, that surgical resection, taking it out surgically, could be um, curative. So they took the tumor out with curative goals, but not before I had to get a pulmonary function test, a brain MRI to make sure it didn't go to my brain. It didn't. Um, an echocardiogram, and was that it? Probably more labs and stuff in there too, but I got the echo, the pulmonary function test, the brain MRI, and I was scheduled for surgery. I didn't even realize when I was getting the brain MRI that like, th that it could have been in my brain. I was just like, okay, I'll just go get the next test they tell me to get. And it was like only after I was like, oh my God, it could have been in my brain. And thank goodness it wasn't. So, my surgery was scheduled for November 2nd of 2021. This was like just over 30 days from that initial chest x-ray. We got all that testing and biopsy and scanning and all of that done in that amount of time, which I think is pretty good. So they told me they were gonna take out my right upper lobe of my lung to get this big old like five centimeter tumor out. And the surgeon was like, we're probably gonna have to do this open, meaning open thoracotomy, like the old school crack in the chest, um, which I think now he was able to do it without like cracking and, and stuff, but that's as opposed to a VATS or RATS procedure, which is like a robotic, video assisted, kind of like laparoscopic, where they, they're able to go in through a few small incisions rather than having like the big six inch scar. And that's what happened. They had to do it the, the old school thoracotomy style. I don't know if it's old school, but I think of it that way. And um, when I woke up, they told me they took out two lobes of my lung instead of just the one because of where the tumor was. Um, I guess it was kind of on that border or straddling. Um, I'll spare you the nitty gritty details of the surgery itself. Maybe I'll do another video about that. But long story short, uh, the surgeon told me that the pathology showed that they got clear margins, meaning they got the whole tumor out and didn't leave any behind. They took out a dozen lymph nodes. They were all negative for malignancy, and there was no visceral pleural invasion or vascular invasion. So this is the best case scenario pathology when you come out of surgery. It looks like they got everything and the tumor hadn't spread beyond the area that they took out. Um, so they had me staged at stage 2B because the tumor was pretty big, even though it was only in the one spot. And uh, he told me that I'll probably need some chemo. So I was discharged home to recover. Uh, recovery was not fun. I mean, it was fine-ish. I had a, a couple like small complications. I had like a giant, it looked like a football amount of like swelling, like a hematoma at the incision site. Um, anyway, so I got, a, I, I healed up and about, I don't know, a month after that, I met with my oncologist who I had, was meeting for the first time and he explained to me what kind of chemotherapy I was gonna get. He also explained to me that I was ALK positive or ALK positive, that the tumor was ALK positive, meaning it had a specific genetic mutation, a biomarker, that um, differentiated it from other types of non-small cell lung cancer, which is what this was, by the way, um, non-small cell lung cancer. Stage 2B, adenocarcinoma, and now ALK positive. So he told me I'd be getting four rounds of chemotherapy, cisplatin and Olympta, which is Pemetrexed, is the generic, and um, that after that, maybe I could go on a clinical trial for targeted therapy because there, those were out there. And you know what? My one little qualm is that he told me that I would lose my hair and I didn't. And I found out later that most people don't with this chemo regimen. So I feel like that caused some undue stress on me that I thought I was gonna lose my hair and had to figure out on my own that like, no, this kind of chemo usually doesn't have that effect. Anyway, I'm glad I didn't lose my hair. Um, 
So I had my four rounds of chemotherapy, zero out of 10, would not recommend. I mean, <laughs> I recommend it if you need it, but oh, the fatigue was like the worst. I didn't even have like nausea and stuff. It was just like so hard on my body. My ears were ringing. My brain was so foggy. The fatigue was just unreal. Um, it was really depressing, but I got through it. I got through my four rounds. We had some little dose adjustments, switched to carboplatin for the last round. Um, and after that, I had, back up a little bit, I had gotten a second opinion from an ALK expert, and I'll get into how I made those connections and everything in another video. But that second opinion, um, affected my treatment plan in that I had decided not to go on a clinical trial to get two years of a first generation ALK drug and decided instead to try to go for a more effective, more brain protective um, second generation ALK TKI. And this was in hopes of warding off recurrence because technically surgery and chemo were done with curative goals. So the idea is that we've cured me, but like recurrence rates are so high, even in early stage that you can't, at least I can't feel confident that I could be done with treatment and it won't come back. Um, so I was very open to going on a few years of a targeted therapy in hopes that we keep recurrence away, hopefully forever, but you know, at least for the time that I'm on the targeted therapy. And that's kind of where we are today. Like I said, I was diagnosed in the fall of 2021. Here we are in the fall of 2024. Knock on everything. My scans have been clear. My blood work has been good. I'm still on that targeted therapy medication. Um, and we hope that this cancer never comes back. Uh, we hope. And I, I pray for that. So... That's kind of my story in a nutshell. I'll do some breakout videos on different parts, maybe one about surgery, one about chemo, one about the emotional roller coaster that is a cancer diagnosis. But nice to meet you all and feel free to comment, share, share your experience, ask questions. Um, I'm just here for awareness and to help y'all out, help anyone out who finds themselves in my shoes that is being diagnosed with lung cancer. Um, so thank you.